Nice. So thank you very much to all of you who filled in the PCB design course survey, which I talked about in my last video. I'm sorry I've been rather absent with replying to comments, been very busy with work, but I'll try to get back to you and catch up with comments and all that um, over the next few weeks. So the PCB design course survey, um, a lot of you actually answered, which is really nice, but we've got over 700 responses so far. Uh, just judging the interest if people would be interested in actually uh, paying a bit for a professionally developed PCB design course where we talk about more complicated material. And I'll talk to you at the end of this video about what Bill we're actually going to be designing. Um, but I think the most interestingly, people would like to know how much it would cost. And this was the kind of split I got. So the majority, 46.2%, uh, said it should be about $50 to $100. And then there's quite a large amount of people who'd say less than $50. So somewhere in between, you know, under $100, definitely the course is going to cost. Um, so hopefully affordable for most people. And hopefully it'll bring loads of good information, you know, PCB design, um, software, and so on. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for filling in the course. And yeah, I'd just like to show you in this video what I've been designing and what the course will be on. Before I show you the boards I made for the PCB design course, I just want to let you know that uh, JLC PCB actually now offers six layer assembly, which is really cool. And that's actually uh, part of the PCB design course is looking at the difference between four and six layer boards. It was really cool because normally they only had two and four layer assembly. But now they actually also assemble uh, six layer boards, which is really nice. And I'll show you the result of that in just a second. In addition, JLC now also offers the assembly of BGA components. And now this makes stuff really interesting because we can look at boards with, for example, uh, FPGAs on them. So I actually have a, a, a video I, I'm making on um, how to design an FPGA with, uh, with a Sidenx Spartan 6 or a Spartan 7. And that will use one of these uh, BGA packages. And of course, that will use some form of uh, DDR memory. And luckily, um, well, JLC PCB now supports BGA memory as well. So we can put one of these DDR chips on with a, with a Silynx um, FPGA, and we can get that all assembled with a six layer board at JLC PCB. So I think that's really cool. But without, without further ado, let's uh, take a look at the board. So here are the boards that I received from JLC PCB. And these are actually the boards that we're gonna be designing together in the PCB design course. So we're going to be looking at differences, for example, at four layer and six layer PCBs, but these are actually six layer PCBs and JLC now offers six layer assembly, which is really cool. So this board is essentially a mixed signal PCB. And you can see here I've added the through hole components and this is the one directly from JLC PCB. But it's, it's quite cool because we have a lot of different sections on there where we have to pay attention to the schematic design, layout and routing. In particular, we have this whole analog section up here and this digital section over here, as well as some power supplies in this, this corner over here. Now the question is, how do we lay out and route and design this board such we, that we don't couple too much of the digital noise into this rather sensitive analog section up here? So in detail, this analog section actually is effectively an audio interface. So we have line inputs, line outputs, and a headphone output. And these feed into various filters and amplifiers with these op amps as well as we have some power supplies, analog power supplies at 9 volts and 3.3 volts. And this all then feeds into this chip down here, which is an analog device's codec. So this combines an, an ADC and a DAC, which then sends essentially the digital data into this DSP, digital signal processor, MCU, uh, over here. So this is an SDM32, which we'll be using as we can implement various DSP algorithms, such as filters or reverbs, delays, and so on. And then we pass that back to the codec, and out the headphones of the line out. So it's a neat little kind of handy system, right? Anytime you want an audio processor or something like that, you could use this board. The digital section essentially just consists of the STM32 microcontroller. We have some quad SPI flash memory, but most interestingly, I think we have this chip over here, which is a USB high-speed physical layer, uh, or PHY for short. And it's quite interesting because you have to do some high-speed routing techniques and length matching and impedance control traces and I think that'd be quite a cool thing to look at. So we have, we cover quite a large spectrum, anything from analog design, power supply design, how do we get low noise, to actually how do we uh, minimize crosstalk, how do we design for EMC, we'll look at ESD protection and so on. And yeah, we'll look at comparison between four and six layer boards and so on. But also high speed routing, we use USB high speed at 480 megabits per second. We have USB full speed, different power supplies with the switching regulator, um, low dropout regulators or linear regulators and so on. So I think it'd be quite interesting to go through the PCB design course. So honestly, all the way from uh, the uh, part selection, schematic creation, 
why I'm choosing certain components. Then we'll go over to layout. How do we do a proper stack up for four or six layers? What are the differences? And then how do we do proper routing? So we minimize crosstalk. We get as low noise um, analog section as well. How do we design analog filters? How do we design analog amplifiers? And how do we design this whole digital section? After we've done this board, we're of course going to test the board and write a bit of software for it. So how do we actually control this codec? How do we write, for example, a DSP algorithm? So I think this could be really cool just to show you the whole bandwidth from creating a product from start to finish, coming up with the idea, choosing parts, designing the electronics, uh, designing the PCB, and then also doing a bit of software and testing the whole thing at the end. Yeah, and hopefully you can um, then also build one of these boards yourselves. And I'm sure all this kind of mixed signal knowledge will come in very useful as well. But yeah, so that's going to be the, the broad overview. And hopefully I can get that course done or to you by possibly January. I think that'd be really cool. So let me know if you have any questions, any comments, anything you would like to see in the course. And I'll start recording as soon as I can.